next up is the third of our four awards. This is for Global Benefactor. Um, the spirit of this award is thanks for thinking big, but I think we ought to change it after night. The spirit of this award should be thanks for dreaming big. And to introduce tonight's award winner is Karen Metz of Micron Technologies. Karen, come on up. Thank you, Jonathan. I am honored to be here tonight to present the 2018 Global Benefactor Award. This distinction is for irrepressible vision and positive impact on society. The spirit of the award, as Jonathan just mentioned, is thanks for thinking big. One of the things that drew me to Micron was the sincere, actionable commitment to technology, industry collaboration, and education, all essential to making our community stronger. Putting the strength of our company behind efforts to make the world a better place is not just a source of pride for us. It's something that I believe everyone at Micron internalizes. In fact, it's embodied in our vision statement of transforming how the world uses information to enrich life. This year's recipient of the Global Benefactor Award clearly shares this same vision. On behalf of everyone at Micron, let me say how proud we are to be presenting this award. This year's awardee founded a nonprofit organization that uses the principles and practices of the digital age to improve how the government serves the public and how the public improves the government itself. She and her inspiring organization have worked tirelessly with thousands of tech and design industry professionals to help hundreds of state and local governments serve their communities better. Now, they are working with the government to use our tax dollars to help millions, starting with those who need the most. Other countries beyond the US are adopting these practices as well. Please join me in congratulating the 2018 Global Benefactor Honoree, Jennifer Palka of Code for America. <laughs> Jen, Jen, thanks for thinking big. Joining Jen on stage is Jacqueline Fuller, president of Google.org. Well, uh, Jen and I have been friends for a long time and partners in crime, and I'm really looking forward to our conversation. But before we start, we thought it might be helpful to get a quick video to oh, great. learn a little bit more about your work. So shall we roll video? Wonderful. I worked in technology media back in the earlier part of the century. It was an amazing time, and it was an amazing wave of innovation and creativity. But it became clear to me that it didn't seem like anyone else was paying attention to how much we were leaving our government back in the 60s, 70s, and 80s. While the rest of our society was just hurtling towards this new frontier, I wanted to do something about that. We talked a lot in the beginning of Code for America about bringing some of the principles and practices of the web era to making government work. Starting with the user, understanding what's going on for the person who's gonna use your service, iterating quickly, following the data about what's working and what's not. In Michigan, it used to be that you had several long, complicated applications for food stamps, Medicaid, and other social safety net programs, each of which took a long time. So we're in the process of simplifying that into one easy, short application so that they can actually get those benefits. If I didn't have this program, I don't know what I would do, you know. I'd be worried and stressed and wonder what I'm going to do for food and how am I going to take care of myself and my son. It's quick, it's easy, it's not hard to understand. I'm so happy it's available to people to have. As hard as it is, we are actually winning. 
we're starting to see interfaces to government that truly are simple and beautiful and easy to use. We have about 70 Code for America chapters all around the country. We call them brigades, and they're led by tech people, but also non-tech people, and they're decided that the best way to make their community better is to improve local government, make it work better for people, and we help connect them and support them all around the country. And what we need to do is just push it into the stratosphere, because we have all the evidence we need that government can work for the people and by the people in a digital age. video. Yeah. So now we, don't, we can just talk about whatever we want because you all know what the organization does. Nice. But I, I just do want to say it's just a real honor to be here and um, this is an incredible honor for me and for the organization and all of our team. I have one team member here, Layla, and we'll, uh, we're just, we're, we're so excited to be honored in this way. Thank you. And thanks for doing this, Jacqueline. Yeah, I know, absolutely. And so we're going to dive into the heart of the matter, the work that you do, but I thought it might be fun for us to get to know you a little bit first. So I'm just going to ask you a series of quick questions and if you could give me sort of a tweet length response. Okay. We'll go through this quick. All right. Didn't Twitter expand? It's, yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. we're going to do this shorter. <laughs> no. Okay. Um, so where did you grow up? Uh, mostly in New York. Um, I grew up in a neighborhood called Washington Heights, which is now famous because of Lin-Manuel Miranda. I grew up on the same block as Lin-Manuel Miranda. Nice. Okay. Um, what did you think you wanted to be when you grew up? Um, a librarian. <laughs> just the, that's what you are. Like, that's the nerd if you're not a computer nerd. That was yeah. Nice. yeah. Yeah. All right. What did you study in college? I was an American Studies major, um, oh, that's very which appropriate it is. That's you know the joke is that what do you do with an American Studies degree? You found an organization called Code for America. <laughs> <laughs> and so, what was your first job out of college? Uh, my first job out here in San Francisco was a secretary at a child welfare agency, um, and I, it was a bit of a random job. Um, but it, it, I didn't stay in it long because it's a very, very hard job to do. It was very emotionally difficult mm -hmm. um, to see um, what happens to kids in the system. And it's something that very much stayed with me as I went into government technology because I could see how those systems affected those kids. So we're going to talk about Code uh, for America in just a second. But what did you do before? What, what were you doing work-wise before Code for America? Well, the funny thing is we're here um, at this venue. Um, actually, um, right before... Code for America was running the Web 2.0 conferences and then the Gov 2.0 conferences. Before that, I ran the Game Developers Conference, so I know a whole lot about oh, NVIDIA yeah. and spent many years doing the Game Developers Conference here in this exact building. It was Wow. A, um, so we've it, all come full circle. I, completely full circle. But after that, um, uh, I, I, I moved on to an, another business-to-business -business media um, uh, company. It was actually the same company with a different name, but um, and we partnered with a company called O'Reilly Media to do the Web 2.0 conferences. And this was, you know, sort of at the beginning of the participatory web, 2003. Mm. Um, such an exciting time. And uh, from from there, kind of decided to do this uh, this brand called Gov 2.0, which is how I got exposed to how government technology works and sometimes doesn't. So you know, where did the impetus come? from for you to say, I really want to work at this connection between technology and government? It was just the enormous contrast, really, between the Web 2.0 world uh, and what I saw in government. I, I, I knew a little bit about government, obviously, from, from working in the Child Welfare Agency. Um, but I had, you know, then kind of gone on and done the Silicon Valley thing and um, uh, had been, you know, really, the, there for the growth of the video game industry, which is an incredibly powerful, um, you know, dreamers making up whole new worlds, this incredible ambition. Yeah. Uh, and then same thing for, for the beginning of uh, Google was young, Facebook, Twitter, uh, we're all on the Web 2.0 stage and you really have this sense uh, of agency and speed and, um, and changing the world. And then when we decided to look at, 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 uh, at, at the, uh, you know, how government technology is built and bought, you really cannot imagine two more different ways of thinking about technology. And it really, for me, connected back to 
wait a minute, we're doing this very slowly, we're doing it very expensively, and we're not doing it in ways that work for users. Okay, what's the impact of that? Money, time, but there's impact on people, kids, mm. um, families that need food assistance. Um, this is an actual, this is an issue of social justice, even though we think of it as an issue of technology. What do you say to technologists? Because I find quite often in speaking to, you know, people in the tech industry, um, almost a disparagement of government mm -hmm. and government workers and government service and just thought, oh, it's so dysfunctional, it just doesn't work, you know, we do things so much better in this distancing. Um, what do you say to people to, to get them to have, you know, as Jeff would say, that compassion? Yeah. Um, I mean, I, I feel somewhat, as Jeff said, authentic in my own um, journey towards that because I feel like I, when I started Code for America, I had a, a bit of a notion that tech would save government. And what I've really found now, eight years in working with public servants, is that they are doing unbelievably creative, uh, courageous work in, under really difficult circumstances. And it, it's, it really just goes back to, you know, try to walk a mile in their shoes and right. you will have right. a whole lot of empathy for, for what's going on. And I think um, that, you know, the mixing of, of those cultures, which has been going on for some time now, where, you know, we certainly there is a lot for government to learn from the techno technology industry. And that is sort of the original thesis. But there is absolutely as much mm. that we have to learn from government, public, the values of public service, um, just the, the desire and the need to serve everybody, not just pick a particular market. Uh, and just the, the, the history of, of our country really is all wrapped up in this idea of this, of this public service that we have a little bit separated ourselves from here in Silicon Valley. And I would like to bring us back together. <laughs> So I bet if you asked everyone in this audience, you know, all of us probably have a cause that we care deeply about. There's probably something that we're very upset that it's just not working. But what made you decide, yeah, I see that, and I'm going to step in and help solve it? What made you think, I need to do this? Well, I'll tell you, I, I had this idea for Code for America one day. Um, over a conversation with a friend who worked in, in local government. And it was, it was very simple, and it's a little bit different from what you saw here. I mean, it was, it, the organizations changed a lot. Um, but it was the idea of giving people a chance to do a year of service working in government from the technology industry. And um, it was inspired by my friend who worked for the chief of staff, of the, he was the chief of staff for the mayor of Tucson. And as soon as that idea came up, I kind of thought, oh, that's such a great idea. We, we could get people to come into government, not for the money, but for, um, for the chance to really do good. And I spent that whole day trying to think of who should do it, <laughs> <laughs> going through my Rolodex. Who could we get to do this? Because that's what I did in the media business. We just knew everybody. And, um, and I sort of finally came to the conclusion um, that the person who should do it is me. And um, the phrase that came to mind and, and was later reminded of by a friend, of, another friend that worked in government, she was, worked in the Veterans Administration, which is a tough place to work right. and a tough place to make change, but she really did. And she was a very powerful woman. It's a uh, quote from Lily Tomlin. Um, I used to think somebody should do something about that. And then I realized that I was somebody. Um, and I didn't really think of myself as somebody at that time. I just thought, no one else is going to do this crazy idea. <laughs> and I, I really have an obligation to try. Yeah. Well, clearly, other people think you're somebody as well, because not only are you receiving this Churchill Club Award this week, but Wired Magazine just named you one of the 25 most influential people <laughs> over the past 25 years. Thank you. So we have royalty here tonight, folks, royalty. Um, so you not only founded and, you know, through blood, sweat, and tears, and a lot of late nights, put together this dream and this vision and this team of Code for America, but you also then took a season, mm -hmm. went into government, and helped create U.S. Digital Service. So yeah. tell us about the U.S. Digital Service. What, what's the dream there? What's the vision? So the United States Digital Service is actually part of the White House. It's now a pretty big group. Um, and uh, I'll tell you a bit how I sort of came to do that. I was working, I'd been doing Code for America for a couple years. I think we had sort of must have successfully shown that this was going to work. 
uh, because we had cities and states and um, counties sort of, you know, um, excited about a different way of doing things, and it caught the attention of Todd Park, who was the CTO of the country, actually um, the second ever CTO. I hope you know that, you know, we only started having CTOs of our country um, when uh, President Obama came into office. Um, so he, he noticed this and asked if I would come to uh, D.C. to run a program that was much like Code for America, but in the White House. And he happened to call me on a day when I was visiting the government digital service in London. Uh, the U.K. has this um, amazing team um, where they're really bringing the best and the brightest technology talent and design talent into government and just completely redoing um, how uh, the UK does digital services. And I said to him, I, 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 I'm, he said, I want you to come to DC. I said, I really can't do that. What an enormous honor, I can't go. But please let me tell you about what they're doing here and we need to do this in the United States. Um, and there's a long story in there where I continued to say no, that I could not go, but ended up um, saying, uh, when he said no, I think we have found the way that we can actually do, we can actually build you know, great digital capacity, great talent, right in the center of government and really transform it from where it matters the most. You have the backing of the president, then I kind of couldn't say no. And it's, it's really an amazing, uh, uh, another amazing group of people who have amazing skills and are just dying to apply them to these things that matter so much to people in our country. And I tell you, people, sometimes skeptical, am I going to move to D.C. or, you know, Code for America, am I going to go work in local government, what it's, what's it going to be like? And once they have that experience and they can see how many people they can help and how mm. much they can help them, they're addicted. Everybody wants to keep doing it and everything else seems sort of trivial by, by comparison. Yeah. Um, and it still exists. I mean, it made it, it through does. into a change of administration, which usually doesn't happen with these kinds of things. When, when I was just getting it set up, everybody said to me, it's not going to last. Like, how are you going to you know, make this work? And one of the things I said was like, well, it should survive if it's good. Like, we actually want to test things, right? We want things that aren't working to, to go away. That Silicon Valley sort of has that um, philosophy, and we don't do that enough in government. And I said, I'm not going to try to protect it. I'm going to just try to make it great. <laughs> and a lot of people who came after D did make it really great. And so, in fact, there is a thriving U.S. digital service now in the White House. And if anyone is They're interested, hiring. continue to hire. Yeah. Amazing, amazing group of people. You've taken some of our Googlers, which we're thrilled about. Matt Cutts is Matt an Cutts, amazing one leader. one of our geniuses. How many years was he at Google? Oh, forever. Forever. And yeah, now he... the heart and soul of Google. Now now he is the fearless and just amazing leader of an incredible group of geeks that are making government better today, even today. <laughs> Did I say that? Well, so we've talked, uh, you know, a lot about your successes, and yeah. they've been many. But yeah. I think, you know, as this group knows, we also learn a lot from our failures. So if you're willing, yeah. I thought maybe you could share with us one of your failures, and um, either during Code mm -hmm. for America or uh, U.S. Digital Service, and what did you learn from it? Yeah. Um, well, first I should say, you know, I made the story about founding USDS sort of um, really sound quite happy, but I think I absolutely would have failed in that had healthcare not, got, not failed. So um, I went to D.C. I thought, oh, my God, the president thinks this is a great idea. Of course it happens, right? Um, and I spent uh, several months there just um, you know, turning PowerPoint slides, um, not doing what I wanted to do because there's so much caution. It was not a priority. And then suddenly you had the launch of healthcare.gov in October 2013. And um, I'd like to remind everyone it did end up working, but boy, did it not work when it first started. And that just put our thing as a priority finally. And so yeah. I just, I always look at that and, and say, wow, by, you know, there for the grace of God, I would have absolutely fallen on my face there. I wasn't, didn't know how to get things done in, in government. I didn't have the political um, uh, oomph to do it, and I just, I, I just would have absolutely failed. Um, but luck, luck, lots of luck. Um, unfortunately, that was not lucky for many people, but mm -hmm. it was lucky for our, um, for our particular agenda. But you know, we, you know, we started out our very first year um, with, um, you know, 
basically all of the projects that we claim as successes, um, we did because the other thing we went in to do, <laughs> we completely failed at. Uh, and you know, it worked out okay, but we have a lot of, uh, we really, really live that notion of fail fast and learn a yes, lot from it. That's right. Um, so taking a little bit broader scope for a second, you know, I think a lot of us feel personally really discouraged about where we are today as a civic society and mm -hmm. feeling like even just the very sort of fundamentals of our democracy and understanding how to talk to one another and argue yeah. constructively and yeah. um, it just feels like there's a lot of divisiveness. Um, I, what advice do you have for America? Jen, to <laughs> could you just solve that and um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, I don't think I can solve all of America's problems, but I do think that I have a unique perspective on our relationship to government. Yeah. And I think what I would recommend you do is try to rethink that, take another look at government, and you and, and I think you may genuinely find two things. Um, if you get up close the way we have, um, you're you may be shocked by how badly things work in some cases. And that's what we're there, we're there to fix. Um, but you also might realize how incredibly valuable it is and all the things it does really well and is getting better at doing and just the things that we take for granted. And um, I think if you think about both of those things, um, what I would say, and, you know, and Jeff talked about this a little bit, like, think about it as looking in the mirror. I really fundamentally mm. now do believe that we get the government that we deserve. And so if you don't like what you see, um, it is not anybody else's job to fix it. It is ours. That is the country that we built, is we the people are responsible for this. So you got to get involved. Um, there's a million ways to do it, but I think one of the things that I'm proudest of most is that eight years ago, at least if you were in the tech industry, it was hard to know what to do, right? Yeah. But there's no excuse now. We know what you can do. You can get involved in a Code for America brigade. If you're technical, you can work for, with Code for America or with city, state, or federal government. Um, there's just no excuse not to do it. And it doesn't mean it has to be your entire career, but it should be part of your career because it matters to all of us. You know, at Google, we started a, um, one of our volunteer programs was to volunteer with local government yeah. and um, kind of surprised us that it was the single most popular opportunity. Yeah. You know, people, I think, are really hungering for that opportunity to plug in um, locally with governments and give back and figure out how to make it work. So. And Google has been on this train of make government work since before I was, and you've done so much to do that, so I just want to give Well, the Google smartest thing we ever did was back Jen Polka. So <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, Jen Polka. Thanks, Jacqueline. <laughs>